you beautiful, amazing people. Thanks for tuning into the channel. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Hyde. This is Hide and Seek Media. Today, I'm talking about Afghanistan. That's right. We've watched over the last four months as Biden has talked about how the the troop withdrawal from Afghanistan is going to go smoothly. Everything is going to be okay. That the the Afghan army and the Afghani government are the ones that are going to have to come together and fight off the Taliban at some point because we're no longer going to do it for them. And that they are more than capable of doing it. All right. We now know that was all crap. As we've seen over the last few days, the Taliban has just completely wiped out any remnants of the Afghan army that was left, the ones that stayed and put up any kind of resistance, they just completely wiped them out. Stormed the embassy, took over Cabal on Sunday, and basically said, anybody who helped the U.S., we're coming to get you. We're going to round you up, and we're going to execute you for being traitors to the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. So, in all of this going on, the Biden administration was silent. No emergency press conferences, no press conferences at all, except for one, Monday afternoon. And it was a brief statement made by the president, and he didn't take any questions afterwards. Just turned tail and ran. And we all know that if that was President Trump, he would have been crucified for that. But the media is kind of going after Joe a little bit on this one. But that's because they have no choice. It's world news. And if they're not reporting it, the world is going to report on them. The world news is going to report on our news not reporting on what's going on in Afghanistan. So they have to. They have to go after Joe on this. But some may say this failure by Joe could be the failure they need to get the ball rolling to get Joe out and Kamala in. I'm still a firm believer. I was wrong on my <clears throat> July 4th prediction. I thought that for sure that this would have, that, that that transition would have already happened. Um, I was wrong. But I still believe it's going to happen. I just don't know when. Um, I know they're probably looking for the right moment for ev that everybody will buy. You know, the best lie that everyone will buy to usher Joe out and usher Kamala in as president. Uh, I believe that was their plan from the very beginning and that's ultimately what all of this is going to lead to. But let's get into the news and you know see what they have to say about what's going on in Afghanistan. Let's uh, check out what the Hill has to say. Biden, Harris, AWOL amid cabal chaos under Taliban. They say, here's a very simple question regarding the national humiliation of a Taliban blitzkrieg that took back Afghanistan after nearly 20 years of U.S. involvement there. Why didn't we hear from the President of the United States as this incredible foreign policy crisis exploded over the weekend? Why, didn't it, why did it take until late this afternoon to explain to Americans and the world what has happened and the import of what they have been seeing over the past two days or more. Here was President Biden's original schedule for Monday as Afghans loyal to the U.S. were being killed, forced into hiding, and left in the lurch as U.S. officials flee, or panicked into trying to board U.S. aircraft at Kabul's airport. <clears throat> in the morning, the President will receive the President's daily briefing at Camp David. 
This meeting will be closed to the press. That's all the schedule said. Late Monday morning, the White House announced that Biden would finally return to Washington and deliver remarks on the situation in Afghanistan. They will be Biden's first public remarks about Afghanistan in nearly a week. Why did it take so long? Another question, where is Vice President Harris, who bragged about playing a key role in Biden's decision in April to withdraw from Afghanistan? Jeremy Dunleavy tweets, April 2021. Harris confirmed that she was the last person in the room before Biden made the decision to pull all U.S. troops out of Afghanistan. Harris said, I've seen him over and over again make decisions based exactly on what he believes is right. Now I want to take a minute here and kind of dive into that quote. I have seen him over and over again make decisions based exactly on what he believes is right. The few things she doesn't say there is that she believes he's right. She also doesn't say that she agrees with the decisions that the president is making. And for all of the for all of us who have been paying attention, right, and seeing the decline of Pinocchio Joe making decisions based exactly on what he believes is right. Well, when you're losing your faculty and you can't remember who you are, where you are, or what government office you hold, how do I? How can I trust that what you believe is right is actually what needs to be done? And I'm supposed to trust that what he believes is right is exactly what we need? I don't think so. But what I what I do have to give, you know, Cackling Kamala here credit for is her shifty side to side talk, man. She's talking out of the side of her mouth, right? I've seen him over and over again make decisions based exactly on what he believes, right? Again, not agreeing with his decisions, just saying that she's seen him make those decisions based on what he believes is right. Nice little piece of side talk there. They go on to say, perhaps when Harris eventually takes a question from the press again, it's been a while since that we've seen that happen, then someone could ask about her thinking around this decision. Here's the president's own words in July on what he would, uh, on what would and would not happen in Afghanistan. How it would be no, in no way. Let's try that again. Here's the president's own words in July on what would and would not happen in Afghanistan how it would in no way resemble the chaotic U.S. evacuation from Saigon in April 1775. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of the embassy of the United States from Afghanistan. It's not at all comparable. Yet there's the pictures side by side. So, the White House defends the helicopter evacuation of the U.S. Embassy. Defends it. And you're going to get a kick how they defend this, all right? I mean, it's... <laughs> oh, man, it's some funny stuff. All right, so... The White House... Well, I should take that back. It's not really... You, sh you should see how they defend it, okay? It's kind of deplorable. When you think about it. So the White House defended the helicopter evacuation from the U.S. Embassy in Kabul Monday after President Biden said last week there would be no circumstance in Afghanistan that would call for that method of removal for U.S. officials. 
Last month, the president assured Americans that the Taliban would not storm the U.S. Embassy in Kabul the same way the North Vietnamese stormed the U.S. Embassy in Saigon in 1975. But, over the weekend, as security situation in Kabul worsened, U.S. troops flew helicopters to the embassy in Kabul, rescuing diplomats as the Taliban stormed the building. No way it could happen. There, it's no way incomparable. It's no way comparable, but here we are. Troops flying in to rescue those people as the Taliban stormed the building. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan on Monday defended the move during an interview with NBC News today saying, to be fair, the helicopter has been the mode of transportation for our embassy to the airport for the last 20 years. That's how we move people. That's what he said. Well, I'm glad that the Today host, Savannah Guthrie, pressured Savannah and, and pushed the envelope and pushed the question because, you know, saying that it was not the mechanism, right? We're not talking about the helicopter, but we're rather the last-minute scramble of the U.S. government after the president had offered assurances that it, that would not be the case. See, we're not talking that, you know, you're playing semantics now. We're not talking about the helicopter itself. And what I mean, even though the optics of that look kind of messed up, right? We're not talking about that. We're talking about how President Biden said the, the Taliban wouldn't storm the U.S. Embassy in Kabul like the North Vietnamese did in Saigon. But yet here they are, storming it just like they did. Sullivan replied to that question with this. He said, it's certain, it is certainly the case that the speed in which these cities fell was much greater than anyone anticipated. Now, I don't think that's true. I think a lot of people anticipated it. They just didn't listen. It's a very dire situation when you see the United States Embassy being evacuated, House Minority Whip Steve Calise from Louisiana said. In fact, you just had President Biden a few days ago saying you wouldn't see the helicopters evacuating the embassy like Saigon, and yet here we are. This is President Biden's Saigon moment, and unfortunately, it's, it was very predictable. Heavily armed Taliban fighters swept in Afghanistan's capital of Kabul on Sunday after the government collapsed, and the Afghani president fled to the country, fled the country, I'm sorry, signaling the end of the United States' 20-year effort to rebuild the nation after the withdrawal of the U.S. military from the region. We failed because they didn't want democracy. Right? Last week, as the Taliban seized more provinces through the throughout the country, the Biden administration assessed that Kabul could fall to the Taliban within 90 days. The White House at that time said that the Afghan National Defense and Security Forces had what they need to fight back. They have what they need to fight back. Except courage. Except heart. Except love of country. And maybe love of freedom and democracy. Because you have this story from Reuters. Uzbekistan says... Hundreds of Afghan soldiers flee over border with dozens of aircraft. Okay? Hundreds of, U of Afghan soldiers f have fled to Uzbekistan with 22 military planes and 24 helicopters last weekend. Okay? So, 46 military aircraft, including one aircraft that collided with an escorting Uzbek fighter jet, causing both to crash, Uzbekistan said on Monday. Now, they're... They also say that it was reported that that jet had been shot down, but obviously they're saying now that they collided and crashed. Okay, A total of 585 Afghan soldiers have arrived on aircraft, and 158 more have crossed the border on foot on Sunday. Uzbek Prosecutor, Prosecutor General's office said in a statement. So over 700 soldiers and 48 military aircraft just bounced over the weekend. Well, if I was the president of the country and I just lost 48 military aircraft and 700 soldiers in one weekend, I can imagine the rest of my soldiers are going to flee too, so I'm not going to stick around. I don't blame the guy for leaving. The problem is, is the, the Taliban is now in control of every major city, every military base in 
Afghanistan, and they've pretty much said they're going to exact their revenge on any Afghan national that has helped the U.S. Here's this story from Mediate. Afghans fall from U.S. military planes after desperately clinging to the aircrafts taking off. All right, so they're so afraid, okay, they're so scared that they're going to be executed that they're hanging on to the outside of these planes as they take off in hopes that they'll make it to free, that they'll be able to get away. Like they could hang on at 200 miles plus an hour or the level of fear that you have to be experiencing in that moment to think that that is a viable way to get out of the country. Man. What? Why is the president not doing anything about this? Why is he just leaving these people to <laughs> suffer at the hands of the Taliban? Now, he did send in troops to try to secure the airport. But you're going to have a battle. The Taliban is not going to let you take that airport and let you keep all these people and get all these people out of the country. They're going to want their, their traitors. Mediate reports. <clears throat> Afghans are so desperate to evacuate Kabul that they, they are clinging to U.S. military planes as they take off from Kabul's international airport and tragically fall to their death seconds after takeoff. Over the past few days, the entire war-torn nation of Afghanistan has been taken over by, by the religious extremist Taliban, who have vowed to exact revenge on any Afghan national who helped U.S. military operations over the past two decades. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'd be trying to get out of there too. As a result, many are so desperate to flee the tar that the tarmac at the, the Kabul airport is filled with desperate Afghans trying to board a flight for evacuation, even sitting on wings and clinging to the exterior as they take off for safe harbor. A U.S. official also said at least three Afghans clinging to the side of an Air Force jet evacuating personnel from the airport were run over and killed. Separately, witnesses reported seeing three bodies, including one, including that of one woman lying on the ground just outside the terminal building. And there's videos here, tons of posts showing people trying to leave. These scenes are just part of many that have emerged from Kabul that show the religious extreme Taliban taking control of Afghan, Afghanistan's capital, which for many have invoked the memories of the fall of Saigon. It appears to be nothing but a political disaster for the Biden administration after President confidently predicted that what actually unfolded over the past few days would not happen. While there has largely been bipartisan support for withdrawing the military from Afghanistan, an issue that former President Donald Trump touted for the past five years and even negotiated with the Taliban, but the withdrawal from the war-torn Asian nation has not gone to plan. In the end, right, Pinocchio Joe was wrong. He lied again. And now, thousands of Afghans are going to pay the price with their life because Pinocchio Joe decided to do what he thought was right making decisions based on what he believes is right well I think his judgments a little impaired and I think that's why ultimately this could lead to the Democrats invoking the 25th Amendment or calling for a competency hearing. I don't think they'll go as far as impeachment. Now, the Republicans may go that far, but I don't think they're going to have the votes for it. So, But you, you're going to have definitely Republicans like Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lori Boebert, Lauren Boebert, I'm sorry, uh, Matt Gates, Cruz, Jordan, 
Um, all of these Republicans, more than likely, some of them will probably call for Biden's impeachment over this. And at the very least, the 25th Amendment and get him out of office. The only problem is, once you do that, we're stuck with Kamala Harris. And I don't know if that's going to be any better. But if you've made it all the way into the video, I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified anytime I drop a new video. Smash that like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this video and the topic. I love to engage with my viewers, so feel free to fire away. Also, I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers so I can change the URL of my channel to my channel name. And the only way I can get to 100 subscribers is if people like you share my content. So, make sure to hit that share button and share my video on all social media platforms. Again, I thank you guys for watching. I appreciate everything you're doing. And I'll catch y'all later. Peace.